Hello, I've got a fairy tale I would like to share you, with you this morning. And if you are sitting comfortably, then I will begin. Once upon a time, there was a wise and powerful king who ruled his kingdom with love and justice. His subjects loved him because his laws were good. This meant that they lived in peace and prosperity and every single one of them flourished in the way that they lived their lives according to the good laws that the king made. But one day his subjects decided that they'd had enough of being ruled. They didn't want a king anymore. They wanted to rule themselves. So they stormed the royal palace and they started looting everything. They sauntered into the royal garden and stole all the fruit that was growing on the royal trees. And as they took a bite out of the royal apples, a mist, a green mist, descended all over the kingdom. And the mist made them forget the king. It made them live with no memory of the king. And they couldn't remember what it was like to live under the king. They couldn't remember what love and justice looked like. So they bumbled along, trying to rule themselves. Some days were better than others. Some days looked a little bit like the love and justice, but it was never really the same. And those days that were good days never lasted long. During this time, the king sent messengers to try and remind his people of who he was. But the people wouldn't listen to the messengers that the king sent. Until eventually the king said, enough is enough. And he walked out of his castle where he'd been staying, right into the middle of the kingdom. He walked into the market square where his subjects were going about their day-to-day -day business. And he showed them what a good life of love and justice looked like. And he taught them how they should live. But they didn't like it. They seized him and they put him on the gallows with a noose around his neck. And as he hung there, dying in the gallows, everything went dark. And as he took his final breath, something amazing happened. The green mist which had been hanging over the whole land suddenly came together and rushed out of the air into the mouth of the king as he died. So the green mist died with the king, freeing the people from the green mist. But the thing with the king is that he wasn't just any old king. He was a powerful king with authority over everything, even death. So death could not hold the king and the king came back to life. As his eyes opened to behold his subjects, he smiled and he said to the people, who wants to go back to the mist and who wants me to be your king again? And those who chose him to be their king lived happily ever after. Now, was that story I just told you true? Well, yes and no. No, it wasn't true in the sense that there wasn't a kingdom with a market square and a gallows that was covered in a green mist that was dispensed by the death of their king. But it was true in the sense that the idea in the story, the idea of a king who dies to rescue his people and bring them back to him, it's the very heart of what Christians believe, the very heart of what Christians believe was happening on the cross as Jesus died. And God's story is woven into the very fabric of the world in which we live. And we see reflections of God's story in all the stories we tell and enjoy. We see reflections of God's story in the fairy tale of the princess who pricks her thumb on the spinning wheel that she wasn't meant 
to touch and is rescued by a kiss, by an act of love. We see it reflected in the big battles in space we see on movie screens between good and evil, where ultimately good wins through an act of self-sacrifice. We see it reflected in the romantic comedies that we watch, where the lead character is initially blinded to what true love really is by the dangerous wrong love, only to find true love with that person who was always there right in front of her, but she never even noticed. And if fiction isn't your thing, then we can see God's story woven throughout history and events that actually happened. To give you but one example, we might see the slave trade, that evil thing that grew over centuries and became so powerful financially that it held the world in a grip. But there was a small group of Christians who read their Bible, saw that it was wrong and fought it. They fought to have it abolished through an act of parliament and it came at great personal cost. But good did out. God's way did prevail in the abolition of the slave trade. These are all just reflections of aspects of God's story in the world all around us. But it's also reflected not just on those big worldwide uh, events, those big international uh, movies and stories, but also in smaller ways in our own day to day lives. I'm just going to tell you one part of one chapter of my life that reflects this story in some small way. So once upon a time, I was in a job that I hated. The pay was rubbish and the office was rubbish and there wasn't really any scope for promotion and job development. Also, the job was pretty boring. So I applied for another job and was offered an interview. Uh, this other job came with a lot more money. It came with a company car. It came with an office of my very own and it came uh, with an agreement to pay for a professional qualification. It seemed like a good job on all of those levels and the mist descended over me. I really wanted that job for those reasons. But the thing the mist blinded me to was the fact that that job was not the right job for me because it involved doing something that I wasn't passionate about. I didn't believe in and in fact I thought was slightly morally dubious. During the interview I was asked the question, why do you want this job? And in that moment I couldn't think of a single good reason and I believe in that moment God freed me from the mist that had descended over me and blinded me to what was important in my life. So I went back to my old job but in a short time, I found myself in a new job where, yes, the pay was better and the office was better and there was more scope for career progression. But it wasn't financially as lucrative as that other job that I interviewed for. But it was the right job for me because it was true to my values and true to, I believe, the values that God puts on all of our lives. That's just one bit of one chapter of my story. But what is your story? And more importantly, how does my story and how does your story reflect his story?